All right, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher's Circus. Today we are going to be playing one hour of Lunge Grave Robber. So some people have been missing the live commentary as well as the one hour videos, so it's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So you're going to be seeing the matches that I don't usually cherry pick, because that's what I do, right? I cherry pick most of the matches, so today we're not going to be doing that. So this team is a very fun one, I've only played it once in the channel. But what it has is full on aggression with the Lunge Grave Orb. It's not something you usually see. Like, you see a lot of aggression. You know, having a Jester, Bounty Hunter, Arbals, like, that's all pretty standard. But with a Grave Robber on it, it's gonna be quite fun. So, we are gonna start off with a sniper shot here after the pull. If there's a Vestal in the back with Silver Strange, you always have to pull her because she just heals way too much. So, we're gonna be doing that. And now, if she heals, we have Lunge into Finale or Dirk Stab. Depends on how much damage we do and depends on how much she actually heals. So she's going to heal for 18, which is the max roll. That's not very fun, but maybe we do enough. Yes, that's enough. <laughs> that's definitely enough to bring her right back down to zero. I don't think my opponent even has a heal here. So yeah, it's it's very difficult for them. At this point, they have to stun my Chester, which they are going to go for. So uh, good job on that. They did drop a command, so they definitely went for the right play. But uh, sadly, it's not going to work. I do have 55 dodge because I went second, so... It is not too easy, and at this point, I just have quite a huge advantage, and it's really difficult for my opponent to win. Even though this is a, quite a terrible matchup, it's just that they went for very weird round one actions, and that's kind of uh, not really helping helping them out too much here. So I can drop a Caltrips if I want to, but I want to finish this match quicker, so I'm just going to drop a Mark here on the Hellion, and we're going to shoot her. So this isn't really a Mark team, you don't have to play it as a Mark team, the Arbals does more than enough damage without the Mark. She's just here to do a lot of damage with the Grave Robber, and then the Bounty Hunter's here to get the kills. And in this situation, since we actually got a... Since we pulled the Vestal to shoot her, and since we got a crit buff, we can just shoot here and do a lot of damage. So this is one very freaking tanky Hellion. She has 44 HP. We didn't really do quite enough, so it's going to be a bit more difficult to take her out than I, than I wanted it to, but she's going to go for a Wicked Hack. Thankfully a dodge. My opponent is getting a bit unlucky on those. I can go for a pick to the face here, I do 9 to 14, which ah, I get a mineral. So about the trinkets, it is something that we have to go over here. Also, you don't drop a finale there, mostly because I didn't have enough damage, but yeah, I don't drop a finale there. So about the trinkets, the Jester just gonna have Monkey Spawn Finisher, you know, pretty usual setup, and he's gonna have solo because you're not really gonna be dropping harvests. If you wanna do DOT, just go with Panic Tarts, you can counter regen between Panic Tarts and Caltrips, so it's perfectly okay. If you... oh, I actually don't have a guard break. How do I deal with this? Uh, I could caltrips, might do one point of damage, let's see. No, it doesn't. Oh well. And I don't get the Bleed on Crusader either, that's sad. So yeah, uh, the Jester is just here with the Finisher to get those kills with the Dirk Stab, he's here to drop Finale. If there's a lot of dodge, you can maybe even justify dropping a Finale early and then just uh, have a Battle Ballad, so it's all fun. So the Grave Robber, since you don't actually have that Battle Ballad, you need a little bit more accuracy on the launch to make sure that it actually hits. So that is what we what we have here. I'm just gonna drop panic tarts on the crusader, just blight them out. My opponent doesn't want to surrender, so we're gonna have to play a little bit of a longer game. So yeah, she has cook and dagger for that damage on on the lunge, as you saw just right there. It gives you plus 15% damage melee skills, which is really freaking good. And uh, it also gives you a lot of abilities while you're stealth. With the stealth, you will actually have I think 20 dodge when you are stealth and you will have bypass guard as well, so that is really good. I could have gone for that, but I totally forgot. I'm, I only remembered it now <laughs> that I'm actually doing it. Did I seriously not do enough to the Hellion? Goddamn. So yeah, you do have bypass guard versus stealth after you drop the Shadow Fate, so your launch is just a really good death blow chance with this. So do keep that in mind. We also have Panic Tarts on her because uh, this setup isn't really enough and there's a lot of protection. Pick, pick to the face is just a garbage ability, so don't try making it work all that much. It's really not uh, not going to go too well for you. You're better off, like way better off, just dropping Panic Tarts on high protection characters. So the Bounty Hunter just has the usual Grappling Mids finisher. I would get rid of Caltrips or even Mark for Death for the the punch, but he isn't really in position one, most of, position one and two most of the time, so just have this usual setup, it's all good. And the Arbalist is gonna have a piercing quarrel and Nikolai Talisman, so she can actually hit the enemy characters. And, uh, and hit them pretty freaking hard at that. So at this point, I think I'm gonna... 
I'm gonna drop a Shadow Fate here and I'm gonna bait my opponent into not dropping a heal. Of course they can drop a heal by the start of next round, but then I can just drop another Dirk Snap on them and hopefully I'll get a kill on the Salian. So it is a bit difficult to uh, to just get a win if, if the opponent has like a lot of cards and a lot of defense. It does get tricky, but it shouldn't be the end of the world, most of the time at least. So here I'm gonna drop a Dirk Stab, it should always do enough damage, even with the protection, and then I'm gonna go for a pull on this, uh, on this Man of Arms. Of course there is, uh, there is the chance that you can always just bring the, the Stabilizing Tiller on this Arbals, but I really don't feel like that's necessary, it's not what this team goes for, it's not really a Mark team. It has the Mark Synergy, but most of, most matches you're just gonna shoot position to immediately, and uh, you're gonna get like a hit for 20 or more. So my opponent goes for the 25%, they get it, of course, but what they don't know is I have Bypass... Um, oh, I have Bypass uh, Guard, but they actually let go of the Guard, so <laughs> sure, I'll just take the kill. That's perfectly okay. And uh, now I have a very, very big launch coming. I'm gonna hit this uh, Crusader so freaking hard, he has no idea yet. 15% prot is not gonna bring you a long way against, against this launch power. So I'm gonna go for it, let's see, how much damage are we doing? 22 to 35, that's 32 without a crit, by the way. This is more damage than a sniper shot uh, against the mark. Sniper shot with stabilizing tiller going last, all the commodities, really. So here it comes, and my opponent is still not out of the match. I don't, I mean, usually novice players don't really surrender. They, they think that they always have a chance, even when they don't. So they're actually gonna go defender, which can be countered in a number of ways. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Here we're gonna see the Shadow Fade into launch. So you only have three Shadow Fades, so be careful with those. But we're gonna we're gonna use it anyway. Should be a death blow here. It's very, very likely. You don't have to finish on this grave over because you know I already have two finisher characters, but it's it's still okay. So they're gonna drop a stun, they do not get it. Quite unlucky if you ask me. We're gonna drop a bullet just to make sure that we have a confirmed death blow with uh, with the grave robber. And then I can just drop a finish him here. It's tickling amounts of damage, but Caltrips is ticking as well, so who cares really? My opponent doesn't really stand too much of a chance. It's just a matter of how quickly can we dispatch them. So they go for a smite and miss, and let's see. You can actually bypass with panic darts, I think, right? Yeah, technically you can bypass with panic darts, but I'm just gonna go for the launch, so keep keep in mind that it's plus 10% death with all chance melee skills, so if you want better kill shots, you have to go for these. How much damage would I actually do to the man at arms? Ah, that is a lot! Okay, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go for the man at arms here because it's gonna be way faster to, to win this match if I just do this, and just go for the other way around, just kill the man at arms first and then the, and then the crusader. So it's exactly what I'm gonna do. Are you really gonna... Oh, my god damn. Well, it's, it's fine. Maybe I get to 25. No, I don't. Yeah, the reason I don't like that is because I could have gone finish him on the Man at Arms and then sniper shot on the Crusader, but yeah, never mind. It's okay, though. It's okay. The Crusader is now the last character standing. <laughs> he had treated advantage this entire match. I didn't even notice. That's so funny. Never always bring Rally to the Flame if you're playing Crusader. There is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't bring Rally to the Flame. So if you're a beginner and you're figuring out how to, you know, what what things to bring, then absolutely do that. Also, a good thing about this team is that it's actually kind of beginner-friendly in terms of trinkets. You don't really need grappling mitts, per se, and um, you can just run the net if you don't even have the grappling mitts. I think Cloak and Dagger is kind of an early trinket as well. So, yeah, it's just getting the second finisher that might be a little bit tricky, but I think you get the second finisher at, like, Prestige 12 or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I would go check the prestige, but let's go on to match number two. Alright, and here we are in match number two, and we are playing against Skijak, which looks like they have a surprisingly decent stress DOD team here. There's definitely some interesting trinket picks, like Eagle Eye Talisman Antiquarian, but it's not a bad pick per se. There's also Silver Syringe Occultist, so it should be, should be a pretty fun game here. So what do we want to do? Well, we don't want to get impaled, especially with this amount of white chance, and we don't really want to deal with this occultist too much. I don't really have a shot on the mana arms here, because he just has too much protection. So I'm just gonna go for a pull on this occultist, basically to just disrupt, because he's quite an annoying character to just have dropping demon spools and the Bissar artillery, so let's do that. If my opponent had gone first, they probably would have guarded, 
that occultist and then it would be very difficult for me to actually break through their team because they have dodge, they have uh, anti current would take cover, they have a shield breaker with serpent swing, and the occultist is guarded, right? So it would be kind of a bad situation for me, but thankfully that's not the case. I can go for a launch here, I'm gonna go for this occultist, maybe I get a crit. Uh, not quite. 14 to 23 is definitely a lot of damage. It's just slightly more than the Arbalist when she goes last with Stabilizing Tiller, uh, but uh, the crit chance is also pretty good, but sadly, you know, no crits. It's okay though, I think a Dirk Snap might actually do enough to drop the Sakaltus down to zero. They do drop Rejuvenating Vapors, which is a smart move, but if they want to play with their Shield Breaker, they're going to have to move forward, so I might uh, be able to take advantage of that. I'm going to drop a Sniper Shot on the Shield Breaker here, which misses. The reasoning behind that was just to threaten an early finale if I got a crit, but uh, sadly it, just, it didn't happen. If I got a, if I got like a crit 26 error, if they didn't go Serpent Sway, I would just drop finale and they'd be screwed. So they're gonna drop a puncture. Now I can drop a battle belt if I want to, but um, yeah, you know what, considering the amount of dodge they have, I'll drop a battle belt. This is okay for me. I might still be able to do enough damage with a bowler, but and against 11, very unlikely. Yeah, very, very unlikely. At least they're gonna lose some of their dodge now, so. I do like that very much. We have Caltrops here to get a death blow if, uh, if it does come down to that. Sadly, we do not have the, the Panic Darts. I could solo forward into a Panic Darts. If they reach and again, I could drop a Caltrops. But I'm not sure if I'm really getting a kill after that. Hmm. Is that what I should do here, or should I just go pick into Bola, into Dirk Stab? Oh, they might self-heal. Uh, it's, it is tricky, isn't it? It is tricky, but I'll go I'll go pick. Let's make use of our damage trinkets. So 10 to 17 with the pick to the face. Not bad. You know, it's, it's okay. Pick to the face really just isn't a great ability. So you have to keep that in mind. So I can, what I can actually do here is I can drop a Dirk Snap first. And uh, they can't guard, but then I'll drop a Caltrips and it might be a death blow. So if that's what they want to do, I will... I will just take advantage of it. They're actually going to go self-heal and they heal for 19, which is a big amount. That means I have to shoot them. And if I have to shoot them, I can drop a Dirk Snap first. So here comes Dirk Snap. 93% headshots, by the way. God damn. That bolster buff might be helping you out here. But yeah, after this, a uh, sniper shot is still a very big chance of getting a kill unless they guard, which makes things a little bit more tricky for me. But yeah, after a self-heal like that, it's... It's kind of difficult, but not the end of the world here. I'm gonna go for a pull on the Antiquarian now, or am I? Or am I gonna go for a pull on the Antiquarian? Pull, shoot... Hmm, there's ideas here. I also wanna drop a Caltrips. Ah, 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 ah. You know what, I'm gonna drop a Caltrips just to just to do some overall damage here. I feel like it's gonna be okay. And then I'm gonna try shooting this, uh, this Antiquarian if possible, threaten the finale maybe. Something like that. It's definitely difficult to break through guards with, uh, with a team like this. Manor Rooms is definitely a big counter to it. Uh, but hopefully we can... Ooh, hopefully we can get a very clutch dodge right there. Yeah, they don't have any accuracy trinkets, so... That was kind of kind of nutty of them to go for that. I'm actually going to drop a ball here just to reposition and also do some okay damage. So that actually puts the anti in position 3, which is way scarier than position 4, because now Dirk Stab hits you, Finish Him hits you, Lunge hits you, but I don't have Lunge at the moment. They don't have Exposed though, so I can just drop a Shadow Fate if I really want to, but it's only if I really want to. So once again, I'm going to threaten Finale. On this, uh, on this shield breaker, so I'm just gonna drop this. They, they have enough regen, sadly, but uh, they have to drop a serpent sway here unless they want to die to a finale. I'm not sure if I want to drop the finale. Probably not. Oh, that's risky. They can roll for zero, but they don't. They do not roll for zero. Damn. Uh, what I can do is I can Dirk Snap into a Panic Darts here, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop a Dirk Snap here, and uh, then I'm gonna drop a Panic Darts to just completely counter that reach and probably take her out. Or if she acts right now, doesn't go Serpent Sway, then there's just Finish Him Kill after a pick to the face. If they change the guard, I'll just go for the Occults instead. They do not Serpent Sway, that is risky. They go for a 50 50 puncture, and of course it failed because that's puncture gameplay. And here comes that pick. So you really need the Eagle Eye Talisman if you actually want to hit uh, the enemy characters with this Grave Robber. I mean, with, with the Battle Battle, it's a bit easier, but not having that 10 accuracy there really sucks. And having that 10% damage is also really helpful for every single ability you have, so not going for it is just, just weird. So yeah, they're gonna not change the guard here, which is 
interesting. They're just going to drop a Rejuvenating Vapors, but now their Shield Breaker is dead and their defense is crumbling. So if you manage to get a kill with this team and you don't even drop the finale, then you're, you're essentially just going to win every single match. If, uh, if you get a kill, then you still have the finale pressure because you just have so much pressure mounting. It's really difficult to deal with this. The, the DOT is also quite helpful, so let's move on to match number three. Alright, and here we go, this time against a nameless veteran opponent, and it looks like they have an anti-stress team here. This is definitely on the anti-stress side of things, but it's not completely helpless against damage either, so it's not like it's a full-on winning matchup. So we are 15 minutes in. I, I thought about doing an Immortal Musketeer one-hour video, but the problem with that is because uh, we'd probably be halfway through the first match at this point and not in the third one. So that's a big reason why I didn't want to do that. So what I am going to do first is I'm just going to focus this Man at Arms down. I think that's going to be smart. He doesn't have Pit Fighter's Helm, so if you see a Man at Arms with no defensive trinkets, if he's in a position to get focused down, focus him down and then uh, just have fun that way. So they're going to drop Polarco Flight, which is definitely smart, but at the same time it's not very smart because now it comes... Damn it. It's not enough. Oh, that's so close, but it's not enough. Uh, after Pick to the Face dropped, they would just die immediately because they wouldn't have Rejuvenating Vapors. Uh, you Rejuvenating Vapors here, you don't guard. That's a mistake. That's definitely a mistake. You were supposed to guard here because now after Dirk Snap, there's Caltrops and it might be a death blow. It might not be a death blow, but why risk it? If you're in this situation, just drop Rejuvenating Vapors. If you're lucky enough to have your Men at Arms not drop down to zero, just drop the Rejuvenation before he's at zero because now Caltrops might be a death blow. Please? Ah, oh, it did zero. Ah, oh, how unlucky. Oh well, such is the way of the Witcher Circus, I guess. Look at that, I did 1 against the Crusader, I did 0 against the Men at Arms. It's just counter of things, right? Yeah, it's sad, but, um, you know, what can you do? So you're gonna drop a bolster here, so having the finale is definitely... I mean, having Battle Ballad is definitely gonna be good for me. But the question is, how can I make that work? So at this point, just trying to hit the Men at Arms here with like a Dirk Sab is not gonna do anything. It's, it's really pointless. So what I can do is instead is I can threaten finale, threaten finale on the Antiquarian, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just drop a sniper shot on her and see where we go from there. I don't really have finale immediately because I didn't do enough damage. I did a lot of damage, but it wasn't quite enough. And they're just going to click and drop another Rejuvenating Vapors. Well, after Panic Darts, I might actually have enough damage. I could also drop a Come Hither. And then after Pick to the Face, I might just get a kill the good old fashioned way. So I'm gonna do that instead. I'm gonna drop the come here, and then I'm just gonna pick to the face. Uh, she definitely jumped the bar, or no, took a step larger than. I don't know. I don't know how to say these expressions in English, but uh, she definitely was a bit hasty on the rejuvenating papers, and now she might pay the price for it. So there's gonna be a debuff here, which sadly does apply. The Grave Robber doesn't have a lot of debuff resistance, I kinda wish she did. I really kind of wish she did. I can do 10 to 16 here, or I can do 9 to 14. The thing is, I really don't want to move forward. Ah, at the same time, it's not too bad. Let's move forward here. I, I had to drop a lunge just to make sure she goes down to zero. Now they are forced to drop a heal, but after they drop a heal, I get to go first next round, so they have to change the guard. If they change the guard, they're losing some actions. It's overall good here. Uh, yeah, they have to heal or else she just dies immediately, so... They're gonna heal, and hopefully my Dirk Sam does 6 damage. My opponent was lucky enough to actually not only hit my Jester, but also get a debuff on him, so I don't do 6 damage with the Dirk Sam. Oh, this is so annoying. My opponent's getting so lucky with, with stuff that's going on right now. Yeah, it's, it's definitely on the annoying side of things, but uh, if you look at it, they haven't really output any pressure on my side. Apart from the Hound's Airy... Okay, no crit. <laughs> Apart from the Hound's Airy hound crit, that was about to happen, but... Uh, thankfully there was no crit right there, so you can drop a finale right now, but I... Oh, there's Shadow Fade. Do I drop a finale? Hmm... Do I really, or do I just panic darts? What do I want to do? Do I want to drop a finale or not? Uh, what, do th what do I think is my best winning shot? Because she has to take cover, right? Nah, you know what, I'm not dropping a finale. I'm gonna drop a Panic Tarts here, let's do it. Oh, it was an 80% hit chance, god damn. That, that Pulsar buff is really gonna screw us over sometime. See, so yeah, I'm gonna do this, she cannot reach, and if she if she goes take cover, I can't just flare the Bell Debuff away, and then I'll go uh, come hit her into Dirk Snap, and I'll get the Death Blow by the start of next round. If after they heal, of course. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna try doing here. Unless they're crazy and 
protect me. Like, unbelievable amounts of crazy, but yeah, they're not going to do that. They're going to take cover. That is the smart move here. So after they take cover, they have to keep the guard up, right? Yeah, they don't have a lot of uh, guard defense. So I fail, I mean, not guard defense, they don't have the, the trinket to prolong their guard duration. So after I do this, they have to heal. But if they heal, I might just drop an immediate finale because uh, they just use a crusader action. Do I do seven damage on the finale? I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I do seven damage on the finale. Or I could pull. Now, let's be smart about this. I don't want to drop the finale too early. Let's go for a pull here, which actually gets a crit for four against protection. Uh, good job, Bounty Hunter. And uh, let's drop a Dark Snap by the start of uh, my Chester's turn, and then we can get a kill by the start of next round. Are they going to change the guard here? That would be quite funny. You can guard the Antiquarian with the Men at Arms, losing the guard on your Men at Arms. You can't make like a ladder guard, if that makes sense. So you guard the the men at arms with the doggy, and you guard the antiquarian with the men at arms, and then if you hit the man, the antiquarian, you hit the doggy. If you hit the men at arms, you hit the doggy. That doesn't work, sadly. Is it sadly? Probably. Mm, I think it would be broken. So yeah, it's it's a good thing that isn't that isn't a possibility here. So I definitely don't do enough damage there. I do enough damage here. So even after they guard, they are still screwed. So maybe they were banking on me not doing enough damage with the protection. That's kind of something you have to know, you have to learn the damage numbers, and uh, even with this amount of protection, if there's no debuffs on the Jester, it's, it's really not going to matter all that much. So what does matter is the amount of um, death blow resistance that they have here, which is significant, which means I don't actually get the immediate death blow, which is sad. I have failed pretty much a 50 and a 40 so far, but... Mm. Now you're gonna drop around to the flame. Well, what I want to do now is I want to change the pressure around to that uh, to that men at arms once again, and just keep being aggressive here. It's really what I have to do. I'm gonna do this, and that's gonna make it so he is taking a lot of DOT. He's not quite dead. Uh, there's a lot of regen on him actually. Wow, that's a lot of regen. But yeah, he doesn't regen anymore, so we can drop a sniper shot on him, and then they have to change the guard again <laughs> to, the, to the Hound Master. But after they do that, they just drop finish him on the Antiquarian, and then she... Oh, you move forward! Well, you see, the reason that doesn't work is because I don't have Stabilizing Tiller. If I had Stabilizing Tiller, that would have been a 5-head play, like 200 IQ, but it doesn't work because without Stabilizing Tiller, I don't bypass the guard. So I don't actually shoot the Antiquarian, and I actually shoot the Men at Arms here, and they misplay. They definitely should have dropped the guard here, just stayed alive, but now they're going to lose the character uh, without the finale, and now they've definitely lost, so good. That is very, very good for me. Uh, I mean, they haven't definitely lost, but they have to drop another guard here, because if they don't, uh, there's just finale, and that's going to be match number three for your favorite Shepherd Doggy. So let's go on for a match number four. Alright, looks like we're gonna have a rematch against the same player. They haven't changed any of their trinkets around, but they do get to go first this uh, this round, so maybe they have a bit of an advantage now. Because they get to drop the block of light before I get to go sniper shot, so that could definitely help them out here. So here comes the bulwark, and that is protection coming through, so what do I want to do first here? Well, one of the things I'm thinking of is just focusing the Houndmaster down this time around, but... Um, yeah, I could definitely attempt that. Uh, I could definitely attempt that. He doesn't have that much dodge. So let's go for him. I get a mineral, 12 to 21. Nice! That is very nice. God damn it. Um, after a lunge, he would definitely have a hard time here, but a uh, lunge is probably not going to do enough damage right now. Come on, crit. I have a lot of crit chance. Come on, crit. No! Ah! I really wish I dealt enough damage there, because if I dealt enough damage with these two abilities, which was likely, the Houndmaster would then just die between what would be coming next, but honestly, screw it. Let's just drop a finale here, <laughs> and that's your character gone. If you want to drop Rejuvenating Papers there, just sure, I'll do this. And they actually surrender after that, oh my god. Don't surrender after losing your first character if there was a finale kill. You still have a win chance. Your battle is just gonna pretty much knock my Jester out with like just a few pops of it, so do not surrender in that sort of situation. You had a Crusader that was very tanky in the front line. You had a Men at Arms guarding an Antiquarian, didn't really have a, a breakthrough point. I didn't have a weakness on my opponent's side, apart from just dropping a lot of Blights and DOT onto that Men at Arms, but. Uh, it would still be very difficult for me to get a kill, they could get some counter pressure going for sure, so they shouldn't have surrendered there, but, um, you know, they did, so let's go on for a match number 5. I'll 
have to remember to change the score around. So there you go. And now we're playing against someone else. Okay, there's a lot of new people in the ladder. It's quite quite a nice thing to see. Hopefully they, they have some very exciting teams for us to play against. And they are playing with a Mark team as well. Oh boy, Sandy's Vein Bounty Hunter. This is going to be fun. Sandy's Vein Bounty Hunter, Hound Master with the Hunter's Charm. No self-heal. Occultist with Weird Reconstruction. Grave Robber with kind of a decent setup. Uh, no pick to the face though, so if she's the last character alive, she won't be able to do anything. It's always a nice thing to identify. I believe that my best choice here might be to actually just shoot the Occultist. Shooting the Occultist is definitely an idea. There's also the idea of pulling the Occultist, but I'm going to shoot him instead. Hopefully get a nice crit. Ah, oh, it's sad. It's sad, because with this team, something that you can rely on is getting those very big crits with this backline, because they have amazing crit chances, right? They have 26% crit, they have 22% crit with the launch, so you can hopefully get those and just get rolling, but... Yeah, it's not working out too well for us. I'm gonna go for this now. See, there you go. That's the crit you want to get. Just immediate one shot on the launch. Just wonderful stuff. Honestly, you might even go launch before the sniper shot uh, against a character like this, because if you do get the crit, they're immediately at zero. So they don't have a guard here. They might go Hound's Rush, but it doesn't do enough HP even if they get a crit on it. Uh, it actually does enough HP with the bleed. Oops. Okay, that's not very good. I could click here, but then I just die immediately to the finish him, so that's not good. I'm gonna go for a Dirk Snap instead. I failed the 60. I might actually just lose my Bounty Hunter here to a very lucky Hans Rush crit. Oh boy. Yeah, it, things are not looking up for us at this point. They are definitely not, but they go for a misplace. <laughs> they waste one of their actions. Good for me. How oh, good for me. Well, I will drop a caltrips here because I want to get the oh god damn it, because I want to get the bleeds on my opponent's side. Sadly I do not take the kill, but it's not the end of the world because I still have another kill shot. If I didn't have another kill shot, I would have gone finish him there, but since I have another kill shot, it's okay. So they're gonna go for the 75 to get it with a crit, of course, but now we have a Dirk Snap here and uh, things should be alright, right? Yeah, as long as it gets the death blow, which is a 90, so if you fail a 90, uh, the Butcher Circus probably didn't want you to win that match, so you you don't have to be too concerned, you probably did, didn't do anything wrong, it's just the Butcher Circus being the Butcher Circus. So now the Bounty Hunter might go for some uppercuts, ac uppercuts actions on me, I'm not entirely sure what they want to do here. They don't have any heals while I do have heals, and I'm definitely not focusing that Grave Robber down. And they can shoot me again, which, I mean, not shoot me, they can rush me again, which would be quite bad. I could flare it, honestly, and uh, I will, I'm just gonna flare here, it's perfectly okay. The problem with with the Hound Master's Hound's Rush is that it sucks unless it has a mark. So, yeah, it's plus 100% damage versus mark, so if you don't have a mark on it, it's really not going to do too much, so this is okay. I'm actually going to go Target Whistle here, which is going to get rid of my small amount of protection. They probably don't notice it, but, you know, it's it's what they're doing. And right now, I'm going to focus their, uh, their Bounty Hunter down, so I could do this, or I could do this. Which one do I think is best? Hmm... Go for decent. I'm gonna do this though. Hopefully get a nice roll. We yeah, have 15 is a nice roll. I don't have enough damage with the finale just yet. I'm gonna have to drop another one, sadly. Throne dagger shouldn't really do my entire health bar even with a crit. So I'm okay here. Yeah, it, it really doesn't hurt all that much. The problem here is that my opponent kind of has uh, meh characters. So things aren't uh, aren't too good for them. They're actually dropping to this store here if they click, so I might be able to save my finale, but I do I really want to save my finale here? I, I don't know. Now if they click immediately, then sure. They can't hit me in position 3 with the collect bounty, which they probably just noticed, and <laughs> then they're going for an uppercut instead. Okay, I see. Uh, I guess I will just drop a ball in that case. That is going to make it so my... wow. So my Arbals could potentially die here after Hound's Rush Throne Dagger, but uh, that is a very big crit, a very nice one indeed. I might actually just finale the Grave Robber. Yeah, not, not immediately because I, I can't, but so soon. Is that enough damage? Oh, it isn't even enough damage, I'm so sorry about that. Well, I'm gonna drop a Dirk Sab, which misses. Um, in hindsight, I could have gone for the corpse just to get the buff going, but honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much. I don't think they have uh, they have a winning chance here. They would have a winning chance if they had picked to the face. Then they could uh, they could still use their Grave Robber as the last character alive, but since they don't have that, once the corpses go away, 
things are going to be very, very bad for my opponent here. So I'm still Mark, so they can definitely hit me down to zero, but after they go for their action with, um, with the Houndmaster, I'm just going to drop a Panic Tarts on the Doggy, and then I'm going to try dropping a Finale sooner rather than later, and then they won't have a winning chance, which is obviously what I want here. So they don't have minus death blow res on me. They I've flared away the the bount uh, the bounty hunter's debuff with the mark for death, so it's not too likely that they actually get a kill here, even with launch. It's only a 45. So they're gonna go for it, and of course they take it because there is no justice in this world. That doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna drop a dirk snap on the corpse here of all characters because that's gonna give me damage buffs while hitting the grave robber, or you know, missing the grave robber probably wouldn't. She got a crit buff there, so. My chances of actually hitting her aren't too good. So my opponent is just gonna use their final action with the Houndmaster because now I definitely have enough damage with my finale, it's gonna be 14 to 25 and it's gonna be GG for my opponent here. They're actually gonna drop a target whistle which is probably the worst way they could have done but it, uh, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. We just do this and now we wait for the corpses to go away. Even if they shadow fade here to try and hit through my through my stealth, I'm just gonna stealth and, uh, and yeah, it'll be fine. They don't have bypass stealth versus stealth. <laughs> Wait, what? Bypass stealth while stealth. That would be pretty funny, but no, they don't have that. So I could try to hit the corpses here, but I'll just do this and then hit the corpse. That's just a smarter play overall. And we confirm a W against my opponent. Always, always punish players that don't bring like. Punish, don't bring pig to the face, don't bring bola. Those, those kinds of people always, always punish their, their bad decisions. So they're gonna go for grid 15 panic darts, which really hurts. But it doesn't really accomplish too much for them in, in the long run. I could actually just be aggressive here. Uh, oh, my hit chance sucks. Okay, why is it only a 60? Did I not drop ballots? No, I didn't. I'm gonna go for it anyway. Let's do this, and uh, just trying to get a kill the good old-fashioned way. No point to prolonging this match. We want to get as many matches as possible in the in the one-hour videos, right? So, and unless we're, we do an Immortal Musketeer video. So, act out self-mark, interesting, and 50-50 doesn't get it. Okay, hopefully they lose that dodge buff, because it is quite, uh, quite an annoying thing to have to deal with. So, if they drop another Panic Darts here onto the Jester and it's a crit, he might actually die. But no, they're gonna go Shadow Fate. Well, I guess that means I'm focusing the corpses down now. So this is doing 10 to 17. It should be enough. It is, and uh, the I think that corpse is going away. Don't uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, I I think it's going away. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. But I, I think he died round three. Was it round three or was it round four? No, it was round three, and now my opponent can do nothing but Shadow Fate again, or pass if they want to. This is why you always bring to Pick to the Face on the Grave Robber. Yeah, always bring Pick to the Face on the Grave Robber, because if you're the last character alive, then yeah. Also, always bring Incision on the, um, um, on the Plague Doctor, because if you are the last character alive, once again, you're not going to have a fun time. So here I'm just gonna pass, doesn't really change too much, just pass so I can drop a, a nice pick to the face now because I have more cells than they do, so now they are forced to pass, it's the last thing they can do. And once again, why don't people surrender at this point? It is clearly over, but uh, Mr. Dude does not want to surrender, they want to go down swinging. And go down swinging they did. Alright, GG Smiper, let's go on for match number 6, I believe. Alright, and here we go, now we're playing against Cactus12, which is the darkest player that I've played against before, and of course they're playing WD. So we're gonna finally see if this team is worth anything, anything. like the previous matches are all nice and good, but playing against WD is the real test to see if a team can actually, can actually do anything, you know, against an actual competitive Mark meta team like the WD is. It's probably the best team in the Butcher Circus, so we're gonna see how how it handles it. So they go for what I feel like is really not the best play, uh, going for, for a play like that, so I'm just gonna try punishing it as quickly as possible by going for a lunge on their Bounty Hunter, so I don't do enough damage sadly, but that's still it's an okay damage roll. After a Sniper Shot I might have a Finale Pressure, I might have Dirk Snap Pressure, I might have a lot of things here. So they, they win second, which is actually kind of bad for them here, because they might uh, miss a lot of their abilities. So they went for a, a Stunning Blow, definitely misplayed. If I were them I would just drop the Block of Light, they actually have Block here. So after doing that, all three of my characters would do less damage, apart from the Arbalist, so 
felt like if they did that it would be just a wonderful play. They're gonna go for a 70% chance of getting the stun, they fail it. Once again, going for risky plays is, is risky, I could have guessed that. And now I have a lot of pressure going because the bounty hunter is almost at 0 HP. So quite sad that I didn't get a single crit, but I'm not going to complain because both their stunners failed their stun action. So overall, if, if you were to ask me, I'd say the RNG is going quite well so far. So for me, so my opponent is definitely, definitely in a rough spot here. They might be going for a pull on my Arbals just to prevent me from, you know, immediately killing that bounty hunter with the finale. But I don't really want to drop a finale here. Instead, I'm going to drop... Uh, Wow, preemptive heal, really? You drop a preemptive heal here, that's your play. Well, finish him is probably enough damage. Oh, I do 7 on 7 to 14! Oh, the Butcher Circus! Bullshit game! That is so bullshit. You do not drop a preemptive heal there. That is absolutely not what you do. My opponent is misplaying out the wazoo here, but I got very unlucky with that 7 to 14. And now this is going to be a bit more difficult to, to handle. So I'm going to drop a Dirk Stamp here to ju just to keep the pressure going. And uh, and we'll see where that takes us. Like, they might get a sniper shot crit on me. But after I take the bounty hunter out, this will be overall okay for us. Uh, yeah, at least that's what I'm hoping for. It is definitely what I'm hoping for here. Yeah, really sad that 7 to 14 failed. Like, just rolled for 7. Unbelievable, honestly. <laughs> I mean, they got a min roll on the heal, so... It's Definitely something to consider, but uh, once again, very weird play. If you're playing in a, uh, a very aggressive comp, you shouldn't be doing that. So I can drop a finale here. That's an idea. I can definitely drop a finale. They have another heal coming. I could just drop a Dirk Stab and uh, Dirk Stab, Dirk Stab, Dirk Stab, Dirk Stab, Dirk Stab. Shoot! I'll Dirk Stab. This is leveling up my finale pressure. <laughs> leveling up my finale pressure. Yeah, it's doing more damage now, so it's overall good. This is, I think, the best thing I can do here. If they heal again, I just shoot them, and then they're definitely losing, because they just squandered the, the pressure they had with the mark, so things are going to be very good for me. They might go for a manacles here, to just to remove my action, but if they do that, I'm going to go for a 50-50. If I take it, it's GG. If I... Eh, maybe not GG, but if I take it, it's very good for me, like very very good for me. If I don't take it, they can then heal, but then they don't shoot me, so it's still it's still okay for me. I'm actually gonna go manacles here, which is unbelievable because now I can flare. But is flaring the best play? That is the question. After I flare, what is my offense? Uh, just panic tarts. After I flare. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna flare. That's a mark and a stun. I think that's worth it. Now they defi they're definitely gonna heal. It's the best play, but after they heal, I can panic darts, which is probably gonna bring them down to zero, and then caltrip slash come hither is a kill. So that's what I'm gonna go for here. Unless they get a crit. And, oh, they get the max on that. They get crit 18. Oh, that sucks. Okay, how do I... <laughs> yeah, you're happy. I see it. I see you being happy. I see that. I'm gonna have to go for, for this. I do minimum. Okay, we might have to drop a finale here. We might have to drop a finale. That's very unfortunate, actually, that they got a crit on that. If they had rolled for, you know, another 8 or something, this would be quite okay. Keep in mind that the chance of critting a heal is 12%, so... Yeah, them getting it is really gonna make things tricky for me, because now they're gonna go for a mark for death, so that's gonna be difficult for me to counter. And I'm just gonna move forward here, I believe. Uh, just to move forward, I mean, they might stun me. There's a Caltrips, potentially. Hmm. <laughs> Things don't look as good anymore, do they, Shepherd Doggy? No, they do not. I'm gonna drop a Caltrips here, just gonna do overall DOT to the enemy side, keep bringing that Bounty Hunter closer to zero. And maybe help me out here in the long run. You're not clicking your Bounty Hunter here, that's not the best play. Uh, they have to either shoot my Arbalist here, stun my Arbalist, or stun my Jester. That's the character that they really have to go for. Stunning the Jester is a good play here, but uh, their best hit chances with the Abomination, but even then it's not a confirmed one. It's only a 76 with the Manacles. They do have the net, so they have a bit more accuracy on it. Are they gonna go for it? I, uh, the problem with that is that, is that I just flare. Or just get that, which is really lucky. Uh, honestly, that is really freaking lucky. <laughs> Not gonna lie that I dodged that. I've dodged every single one of their flares so far. I could flare here, but I'm not gonna do that. 
I'm, I could drop a panic dart onto that uh, bounty hunter, and I will. I'm gonna drop a panic dart here. I actually get a crit for eight. Oh, that's so clutch. That's an affliction as well. Oh my god, the stress on that is unbelievable. Yeah, plus stress taken from the um, from the Caltrops debuff actually helping us out here. And they go hopeless, which means they can refuse heals or pass or do a number of very bad things like moving back with the bounty hunter. So this is really good for me now that I actually dodge that stun. I mean, even if they got the stun, I would just flare. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. They can heal here, but they're still dropping down to zero HP from the from the bleeds and all the nastiness. So it's not the end of the world for me. I could pull this Arbalest. That's an idea. That's definitely an idea, and it's... Is it the idea that I go for, though? Yeah, let's do it. Let's pull the Arbalest here. The problem here is that Bullock can actually hurt me pretty bad, because my frontline is squishy as hell, but... Uh, yeah, it's still it's still okay for me, I believe. And I can actually shoot them, unless unless they knock me back. If they knock me back, then I won't be able to shoot them, but uh, I really, really hope I can. They're gonna flare! <laughs> That's mad! That's mad that you actually flare there. That's unbelievable. Well, do I drop? Do I want to drop a finale? Not really, I'll just drop a come hither next round. I'm gonna drop a sniper shot here instead, which does 14 damage, which... If, if that was a crit, it would be GG. But uh, it's only 14 damage, so it's not quite GG yet, at least. So Hopeless moves forward the correct act out. Oh my god. And now they have a few choices. I Wait, actually, no, that's a very bad act out. I can hit them with Dirk Staff now. That is a horrible act out, actually. I just noticed. <laughs> I thought that was, oh no, the good act out. Now can, they can use finish them if they want to. But no, that is a very, very bad one. Because now Dirk Staff actually hits them and they're screwed. They're absolutely screwed. Yeah, that is so funny, actually. Damn. Now, they're gonna go for the finish him, which shouldn't really... <laughs> oh, Arbalus. Oh, oh, but your circus never changed. I'm gonna drop, drop a Dirk Snap here. Not quite the kill, sadly, but uh, still, still very, very good for me. And now they have heals, but um, after the heal, I mean, they're still taking a lot of the OT. Things are very, very difficult for them. Hopeless can say no to every single heal, of course. So, hopefully, Hopeless? Uh, no, Hopeless doesn't say no. Well, Panic Darts here could just keep the pressure up and up and going. I could just shoot the Arbalest here as well, which is what I'm gonna do, so let's drop a shot here. Uh, once again, kind of a bad roll, but at least she's almost down to zero now, so that's uh, that's good for me. Yeah, the Arbalest, uh, just, uh, I wish she was at zero right now, but she'll be at zero soon. At the very least, so I can't really complain too much. Now they're gonna stun me because I can't flare anymore. So that makes sense. Uh, no, they're gonna transform, they're gonna go for damage. That also makes sense, but um, hopefully it doesn't work all that well. No, it does work. Okay, I am in the back now. What I could do here is I could drop a solo and then be kind of impossible to remove from position one. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna drop a solo. That also does stress to the bounty hunter, which gets me close to a, closer to a kill on him if that's what I really want to do. So it was through a heart attack, so that's also good for me. Yeah, interesting how this team actually has stress because of the panic darts, right? So they're gonna drop a ball here, which is probably gonna miss. Uh, it misses one character, hits the other one pretty freaking hard, but not the end of the world. And now I can actually drop a lunge if I really want to, or I could drop a panic darts on that Arbalist, which is what I will actually do, because that's gonna stress her out, it's gonna apply the OT, and it's gonna put her at death's door, which is gonna allow me to go for a pull if I if I really want to. And yeah, their their characters here are just getting absolutely demolished, and I still have finale pressure probably to drop on the abomination uh, soon. So Hopeless doesn't go for a self-hit, sadly, and they can go for whatever action they want. I would just drop a Caltrips here if I were them, because my characters are all very, very squishy, so any sort of damage they deal to me is uh, significant. So that is 100% what I would have done. I probably would have done it round one, but you know, that's just how I play WD. I just, I like damage, you know? It's it's a damage team. How would you not like damage? So yeah, let's see what they actually want to do here. Yeah, there they go. Finally with the Caltrips. Gets a crit on it as well. Good for you. And uh, I'm going to go for a pull on that Arbalus. Hopefully get the 50-50. I feel the 60 on the Bounty Hunter, so hopefully I get this one. Oh, come on. Oh, at least I get a crit on it. Ah, that's so unfortunate. Ah, these characters should be dead already. Hmm. Things might actually be rough for me here, because my characters are kind of dropping. Ah, uh, it should be okay, though. It should be okay. I have 55 dodge here on the Jester, so it's very difficult for me for them to prevent a finale. And once I drop a finale on a character like the Abomination, they're just gonna die. Because the Crusader can't really win a 1v4. 
So they're gonna drop a heal here on the Arbals, which is gonna keep her alive, not for long though. So I'm not too concerned about that, and I'm just gonna... Um, do I want to shoot the Bounty Hunter? Is that really... I mean, do I want to pull the Bounty Hunter? Is it really the play here? I could launch as well. Yeah, let's launch. One should be a kill here, so let's do it. Uh, let's go for a launch, it's a 70. So take the Bounty Hunter out. And uh, now my characters are in a bit of a better position, because uh, after the Arbol stacks, I can hit her with... Uh, with a ball if I really want to, and uh, if it isn't a death blow, then the finish him will be, so that's, that's very good for me. They might stun my Arbalest now, though, which is probably what I would do. But uh, let's see what they what they want to do. Let's I'll see what they actually want to do here. Are they going to go for another slam? That's an interesting, very bold move if they do that. Oh, they are. They're probably going to miss it. No, they don't. They get a big roll on it as well. Oh, boy. Okay, that doesn't look good for me. That does not look good for me at all. Well, I kind of want to solo here. Hmm. Yeah, part of me wants to solo here. It's risky for sure, but that's what I want to do. I want to I want to get my dodge up to 70. Like, this is almost impossible to deal with now, especially with all this crit. So they're going to go abusive, which is eh, just good. That's minus 5 accuracy, so their chance of hitting my jester now is essentially zero. So that's that's very nice, and uh, after this I'll just try to take them out. So, damage actually, 6 damage on this abomination, good, good stuff. And they're gonna drop a bullet here, which thankfully is a dodge. Honestly, I was expecting it to- oh, god damn it. I was expecting it to just be a crit, and then I would, I would just lose on the spot. <laughs> you know, crit death on the Jesser, and uh, then I would lose the match. But thankfully that's not what happened. So I'm gonna drop a come hitter here, I definitely want to kill the Arbalist, but I fail it, god. Damn, just get out of this match! You should be dead! Uh, but hopefully the bola will be the kill here, right? Okay, finally she's gone. And now taking care of my jester is, you know, so bloody difficult. 70 dodge against the WD, there's just nothing you can do. Even with manacles, your hit chance is only, what is it, like 116 versus this, versus this. it's less than 50. We're gonna go for rake instead, we get a dodge on it, and now we can play this very, very safe. So we can just go for a heal on the grave robber here, and heals on grave robbers and characters like her are good for me at this point, because it cures caltrips, and they have, they don't have a confirmed hit chance on them, so we can always get a dodge, which is just a, a win, which is just a win, yeah, it is what it is. And WD is actually going to go down here to this team, so if you had any doubts on to whether it's uh, actually competent, or it's just uh, all those matches were flukes, then, you know, now you know. Now you know. So what I can do here is I can just drop a pick to the face and go Dirk Snap, but uh, that would be kind of insane. I'm going to drop a... I'm going to drop a Shadow Fade into uh, something with the Bounty Hunter here, and, but yeah, I'm definitely just going to drop a Finale. At this point, there's really no reason not to. Definitely does enough damage with all the with all the buffs I've gotten and with the, with the solos and the crit chance on it. So yeah, look at that, just brutal. And now they can kill my gesture, but I generally don't care anymore. As long as I win the match, I don't care if one of my character goes down. And we just have to drop a finish him here. Yeah, it's something that people kind of find it weird that I kind of just sacrifice characters left, right, and center, and sometimes play greedy with my with my characters' HP amounts. It's because I don't really need them. I just need to win the match, and if I win the match, I'm happy. So they're like, "Oh no, Shepard's actually gonna win." So I do 18 to 29. Oh, that's a lot of damage. And I get a mineral on it. Of course, why not? I actually get a mineral on 21 to 35. That is unbelievable. Well, that's that's just how the Butcher Circus is. Of course, we get a crit after it, so it doesn't really matter. This is just this is just Butcher Circus in a nutshell. And yeah, now that um, poor little Crusader is just absolutely gone after to the 90s, so WD is gonna go down without getting a single kill. So GG to Cacts, and I think we're not done yet. No, we have time for one more match, so let's go on for match number seven. Alright, and here we go, this time playing against none other than Yar. So this is definitely Yar because you can see from the name, I'm Mark Stun Despiser. There's only one person that would call themselves that, which is uh, the one and only Yar. And they actually have Gladiator Helm on the flagellant, so this is 100% Yar flagellant. So kind of the thing behind them is that they absolutely despise Mark Stun players. Uh, with their entire heart and their entire being, so they're gonna try taking me out here. So this is a team that they... One of the teams that they have to kind of try and counter it, and it's definitely interesting on the on the setup. 
I'll give it that much. What do I want to do here? I think... Uh, I think I'm kind of screwed to an extent, but uh, what I am gonna start off with is just a misplay. I don't know why I went for that. I was running out of time there. I was hoping that I would do enough damage to the position 2 character, but no, not with this amount of... Yeah, no, 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 it's impossible. Okay, it's gonna be very difficult to break through this with the reclaim and all the, all the nastiness that my opponent has here. So I can drop a Caltrips, and uh, I will please do not fail the bleed on the Grave Robber. I mean, she can go... Ouch! Oh, ouch! <laughs> this is horrible, this is horrendous. Oh, I mean, she had Toxin Trickery anyway, but... Uh... Now she doesn't even have to drop it. Oh my god, this is horrible. Oh, okay. How do how do I go from here? How do I go from here? Well I have sniper shot. I need to threaten a finale. I'm gonna do this. I need to get the finale crit right now. Yeah, it's it's not gonna happen, but uh, uh maybe I can go for it. Uh, they're definitely gonna drop a reclaim there because they don't want their high man to die. And uh, I'm just gonna see what I can do here. How much? Yeah, not even, not even possible. Well, I probably dodged, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Dude, seriously, seriously, 55 dodge, and you get two crits under a past. Jesus, that's unbelievable. That is just unbelievable. They might go for a guard here. Uh, just change the guard onto that high man. If they do that, I'll just pressure the grave robber instead with uh, sniper shot and finale nonsense. Now they're gonna go for their final action. They're gonna go grave shot. No, Duelist Advance again! God damn, they're, they were trying to bring me down to zero with that. Well, in that case, I'm definitely gonna drop the finale here. 9 to 16, we take the kill on the on the higher man. And uh, yeah, that's how we're gonna roll. We are gonna roll like this and see if we can actually still win after that horrendous start. We do have caltrips on these two characters, so we do have something going for us, but we no longer have the finale, so it's gonna be difficult. It is definitely going to be on the difficult side of things. They have Punish, so it's uh, it's uh, it's not great. And I'm afflicted as well. They got two crits with with the Panic Darts. They got two crits with the Panic Darts. And I go selfish. Oh boy. All right, all right. How do I want to win this? How do I want to win this is the question. Well, I'm thinking of dropping a bullet here as weird as it looks. Probably using my final bounty hunter action would be smart here as well. Pulling the mana arms to position two or to position one wouldn't be too bad, so I'm gonna do that. So selfish move storage, which is actually quite good here. Thank you, selfish. And I'm gonna pull, go for a pull here. So these guys are kind of in more of a weird place. It's uh, it's better for me to just do this. Uh, my shot could actually hurt this mana arms quite a bit, but I really doubt that happens. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna try it. So they're gonna go for a kill here, they do not get it. There's really no point of me healing, they just keep dropping more panic darts and overall I'm just gonna lose my characters. I can just focus this mana arms down with panic darts or even with pick to the face if I want to. Uh, panic, uh, panic darts is gonna do more damage at, uh, at the end of the day, so I'm just gonna drop the panic darts here and just try to get them out that way. I think I'm gonna lose this regardless, even though the mana arms can go down here, unless my unless my round hunter survives for quite long. Mostly because my chance was already used up as finale. I don't see myself beating that grave robber at the end of the match, sadly. So I can shoot here. I just got debuffed, but I can still shoot here. Let's go for it. Nice crit 22. Good stuff. You are dropping down to not zero now, but almost, almost zero, which is what I really want here. I can pull the corpse just to put the flags out of position if I really want to do that, but they're going to drop a reclaim here. Or not. Please fail. Oh, I wanted them to fail that. Well, that means that um, the Man of Arms is, is dead, but uh, yeah, that's that's a good thing. The Man of Arms is very likely dead here because I'm just going to drop a pick to the face and I'm going to drop a Dirk Stab and he's probably going to die, which is obviously what we want here. So they're going to drop a bolster before they die and then it's going to be a 3v2, but it's not a very balanced 3v2. Yeah, not at all. Okay, so here comes Pick to the Face, not a death blow with the 35, sadly. And uh, then it's gonna come the Dirk Snap, and hopefully it's enough. So here comes Panic Tarts, not a crit, but it's it's enough stress. Damn it, damn it. Okay, Jester, don't do something stupid. Please do not be stupid. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Oh my god, Finisher. Why must you do this to me? 
Okay, he actually survives. I thought we were gonna get the funny there from the masochistic. We almost got the funny there from the masochistic, but uh, thankfully we didn't. My opponent is still in a rough spot here because uh, they have to go for their action, right? But um, I, I do have a death blow here on the flat front if they, you know, if they're not careful. I do have that. So the problem here is that I don't actually hit the grave robber. I, I don't have any freaking hit chance on her, so I could have actually just waited. I could have waited and gone for the battle ballot, but I will... Um, I have to focus this flash on down. I'm gonna do this. They have to go for a heal here. I really doubt they go exsanguinate against the amount of dodge I have and with the zero accuracy. I really doubt they exsanguinate here. Oh yeah, they can't even exsanguinate. They're gonna go for a punish, and they do get the kill. They actually have enough stress on it. God damn, that's that's rough. Well, I'm, be I'm bleeding out here, right? Yes, I am. Hmm... You're not taking enough, but you can click there and then... Oh shoot, okay, they have to go for the heal now. They're gonna drop an exsanguinate on me, which is rough, but then maybe this does enough damage. And after that we'll be fine. The problem here is that Gladiator Helm gives you protection and also gives you more healing on the on the exsanguinate because of how it works out. So hopefully they don't get the bleed. I have a lot of bleed res here. That's really what I'm hoping for. They go exsanguinate on the corpse because of the hit chance and they actually take out the corpse. That's that's unbelievable. Well, uh, pick to the face might just do enough here. It really has to do enough here. If it doesn't do enough, it's over. So pick to the face, 18 to 30. Nice crit, man. Nice crit. Okay, and now I have two shots at getting this. Well, maybe even more, actually. Maybe even more than two shots because they're dazed. Might even have three here. Hopefully, Bolo doesn't do a knockback. If it does a knockback, I'll. <laughs> they actually do that! Oh, that's so funny. They actually do that, and I get the crit on the wrong character. But it, it actually does that, which isn't too bad here. Um, I'm kind of screwed, though. Not gonna lie. I'm kind of screwed. I have to go pick to the face now. I no longer have a kill on this flash one. That's so funny. That's so funny how this works out. That's so freaking funny. Okay. How do I want to do this? I don't know if, if moving back there was the play. I could have just passed and then I still got another death blow here, but with panic, uh, with panic talks would have only been a 20. So it would be very unlikely to get it regardless. So I'm just gonna go for my for my Shadow Fate first, see what they wanna do. If they wanna drop a Redeem. Uh, if they drop a Redeem, then sure they drop a Redeem. If they don't drop a Redeem, I'll just kill them next round with uh, whatever. So, let's see. They drop a Reclaim, that's insane. Hmm. They go first. This is terrible. This is just absolutely terrible. Uh, can I win this? Pick to the face. All, uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Nice crit. That's good. That's quite good. It's not gonna matter because even if I kill the flash, he's just gonna heal the grave robber, and then and then you know, just stuff happens. Hopefully they miss the exsanguinate. Their hit chance is far from confirmed. It's um, it's an 85 of hitting. So hopefully they won't get it. Are they gonna go for it? No, they're gonna drop a redeem. Makes sense. Let's see how much they heal for. 18. That's definitely a lot, but uh, I can I can bring him down to zero after that. Hopefully they don't get a crit pick to the face on me. Even if they get a crit, I don't think they do enough damage, so it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna do this, and now I'm gonna have two chances, maybe even more, of taking that that flash out. Uh, that flash out, so that's what I want here. Yeah, once again, doing damage to the grave probably really wouldn't have made a difference with that crit earlier, so who cares. They're gonna drop pick to the face here. They only roll for nine, but that means that I'm at the store next round. But here comes Bola. Not a 20. Okay, this is definitely the final match though, we're at 58 minutes, so... The final match to see if I actually get 7 wins, or if I don't. So they're gonna go pick to the face here, they bring me down to 0. Oof, but I'm gonna go for the pick to the face death blow with the cloak and dagger, so cloak and dagger do not let me down. It let me down! It let me down very freaking bad. 45% chance of getting the kill and I do not get it. And now it's over because unless Exanguinate misses. Oh and now it's over, because there's just no way I can take this flash on out here. Damn it, I so wanted to win this. I don't know. It's just it's just a very difficult matchup with the start. Uh, the start that happened was just really, really rough. But you know, ER is a good player, so it's it's okay that I lose the final match to them. So they're gonna take the 40. Of course they take the 40, and um, I still have to try and kill the, the Flagellant here, but he still has two heals. It's uh, why is Flagellant so broken? I should have kept the finale for him. 
I don't know. Maybe I miss Blade Eater somewhere, but there just isn't much I can do. I just have to keep being aggressive. Maybe he misses an Exsanguinate somewhere. That's that's my my winning chance here. And after that, I might be able to win the 1v1. Might. Uh, I have more Shadow Fates in them, right? No, I only have one! <laughs> well, they still have all three. Please miss. Oh, okay, they only heal for seven, but they still have a redeem. Oh, this game. This twisted game. Why is Gladon so broken? Why did he survive? Oh, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Okay, yeah, it's funny how he complains about marks and stones that then place flash ones, which is arguably more broken in my opinion. Eh, whatever. I'm gonna go pick to the face here. It hurts. It doesn't hurt too much, but it's gonna it's gonna hurt. So here comes the redeem, another heal. Uh, okay. Sure. And I'm gonna just do another pick to the face, and then I'm definitely not gonna win the 1v1. I mean, there's a chance I win, but against three Shadow Fates, having only one, I don't really see that happening. But, you know, uh, you, you never know. I could just get very lucky on the death blows. That could always happen. Plus, if they're the last character alive, they don't have plus death blows. They'll chance all I do with the cloak and dagger, so... Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe it makes a difference. You're gonna drop a punish here. Please miss. That's not a miss. That is not a miss. If I were them, I would have dropped her claim, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's rough, buddy. Well, here comes... Maybe Shadow Fate is the play? I mean, after I Shadow Fate, they Shadow Fate, so... I'm just gonna drop the pick to the face and I failed the 60. Please, just die. Let me get one kill here. Oh, uh, yeah, this is this is lost, sadly. This is, this is beyond lost uh, at this point. Yeah, but... Uh, they're gonna go for another punish, and they do not get the kill, so maybe I might actually still be able to kill the flats ones here. Let's see. It's just, it's unbelievable how broken this character is. I failed 75! Oh, damn it! What a terrible end to this one hour of lunch grave robber. They don't get to death on me, and they're, but they're probably gonna kill me with the punish. Please don't. I failed the 75. Yeah, with the crit as well. Well, GG's to the R. Leave from the Holy Barrier, my peace faints. Yeah, if you want to win, just play Flash Hunt, honestly. But Lunge Grave Robber, you definitely saw how powerful it is. I definitely misplayed this match at the start, shouldn't have come Lunge. There's a lot of different things I could have done. And uh, I felt like uh, I wasn't really ready for this matchup. I've never played this matchup before. I'm not even the most experienced player with this team. Like, this is the second time I'm playing it, honestly. There is so many options with it, and it's really quite solid. You can't go wrong with this team, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you'll try it out, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!